How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this one I'm going to be talking about cylinder leak down testing. This is a test that I have done for many many years now. It is extremely effective at pinpointing down falls within an engine and I'm going to be sharing with you the reasons why you would do that test and how you would set that test up in this video. <laughs> Okay, so what is a cylinder leak down test and why would I use it? An example that I'm gonna share with you is a diagnostic that I'd done a while back. It was on a Toyota that came in with a rough running engine. It had one of the cylinders that was actually down, dead misfire on that cylinder. A compression test was done across all four cylinders and it was found that one of the cylinders was completely down on compression. So at that we know we have a fault, but we don't know exactly what the fault is. That's when a cylinder leak down test comes in. So we wanna find exactly, if we can, what is causing that cylinder to be low on compression. So utilizing a cylinder leak down test, we're able to give an accurate diagnosis that I can give to the customer on what is actually faulty, which benefits the quoting process, the evaluation of time and repairs, etc. So on that Toyota, it was let's get the cylinder leak down test done and find out exactly what's wrong with this engine. The next steps in this are the most important steps of this test. You need to accurately have the test set up or you're gonna get inaccurate results, which can lead you down completely the wrong path. So to set it up, you want to have the piston on that cylinder that you're testing all the way up to top dead center. What that does is close the exhaust and intake valves and you're gonna have a pressure reading which is accurate within that cylinder when tested. How you do that is put a socket, get a ratchet on your crankshaft pulley and you're gonna rotate over that engine and you're gonna watch as the piston in that cylinder comes up. You're gonna obviously have that spark plug removed and you're gonna have some type of visual um, tool down in that cylinder to watch as it's coming up and down again. In this case, I'm just using a wire, a straight wire that I put into it. You can use a long screwdriver, you can use a long quarter inch extension. All of these are gonna be effective. And as you rotate the engine over, you're gonna see it just push up to the top. And as it comes a little bit down, you rotate back and you get it right at top dead center. That is gonna be the way you set it up. Then on the tool itself, all you have to do is regulate the dial, using the regulator on the tool, the dial down to zero before you connect it up to the cylinder. That's gonna give you um, the reading that you want. If, if the dial is incorrectly set up, you're not gonna have a correct reading as well. Now that we have the uh, engine ready for testing and we have the dial ready for connection, we can then go ahead and do the test. Now that we have the test all set up, we're ready to go and we're ready to evaluate this engine and see what's going on doing this test. I connect up the air and then it's listen, listen, listen. I start off by checking to see through the dipstick if there's anything pushing down through there. So what we're evaluating there is the piston rings or the cylinder walls. If there's any damage there, even if you have a cracked piston, you're gonna be having a blow through which will cause a air passing out the dipstick. If you don't have a dipstick in your, uh, in your vehicle, which is in some cases, you remove the oil filler cap as well and you can remove a pipe off a PCV valve, also positive crankcase ventilation valve will also be connected down there, which will give you an idea if there's air passing through into that um, lower side of the engine and coming up through. That is one of the checks that you do. The other check you do is on the coolant side. So we're gonna be checking the head gasket or potential for any cracked head. And how we do that is, 
uh, the expansion tank we're looking down and seeing if there's any bubbles coming up through uh, radiator cap if it's that style directly on the radiator to see if there's any bubbles coming up through there either or sometimes you can have so much pressure coming into it that it actually pushes coolant out so it can be coming out through the overflow can be coming out through the radiator or the expansion tank and you can actually see it uh, push up through there and we know we have a failure in that area lastly is the valves so the intake or the exhaust valves by doing your checks you can see which one of those uh, is faulty in this case i was taking a pipe off the intake manifold and i was able to hear it which you can see here which gave me a complete uh, understanding that the intake valve was not seating right on this cylinder head. So that is a very, very definitive fault finding way showcased there as to um, what is going on inside this engine. And on the exhaust side, you check at the exhaust pipe typically. Now, one of the common tests that you might've heard of is putting a glove on the back of the exhaust and that would expand out if there's uh, air pushing all the way through that exhaust uh, valve all the way through to the exhaust pipe. What I would urge in them instances is uh, caution because you can have a gasket leak upstream from the exhaust back pipe, which could give you uh, an inaccurate reading on that glove test. I had a Jeep uh, a while back that that was the case. It was actually rust in the muffler and it was losing some of the pressure before it would even get to the exhaust pipe. So that can be a cracked exhaust manifold, it can be a um, exhaust manifold gasket, it can be any of the gaskets on any of the uh, sections of the exhaust all the way back, even the oxygen sensors not sealing right. Anything like that can cause it to leak through. So listen very carefully all the way along the exhaust system to make sure you have an accurate uh, result when checking the exhaust valves. And after that test was done, I was able to talk to the customer directly and tell them that you have an issue with your valve seating on uh, the intake valve. We don't exactly know why that reason is why yet. We're gonna have to investigate a little bit further, but I was able to tell the customer, this is what you have to do. And here's an idea of the quote that it will be based on what we found. Customer gave the go ahead and we were able to go and rip that cylinder head off. But when we had the manifold off and we were able to look in at the actual back of the valves, we could see that the intake valve was not seated correctly. So the diagnosis was 100% accurate. Intake valve not seated right, had that failure and we were able to confirm that on removal and actually in this case show the customer what exactly went wrong while we're getting the repairs done. And that is the steps you take when doing a cylinder leak down test. Following that process will give you a very accurate result and be able to pinpoint down the root cause of what's going on in the engine. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.